Hi guys. Well, sorry about my absence there for a little bit. Um, for me, it was like a holiday also. Uh, I've been doing these videos for a while now, which you already know, and it's a lot of work. So I just thought, you know what? There was some stuff I was gonna do on my uh, truck and, and trailer or camper, and you've seen me do it before. So it was something like, well, do people really wanna watch me wax a, a, a trailer again or camper? But I also did some other things. I had, I had fun. I uh, had some parties. I uh, went to uh, our tractor pull. That's a local tractor pull around here. I did some camping. So, I mean, I'll show you some clips about uh, a little later on about that, what I did. But uh, I also, uh, you know, maybe picked up a couple of things. So you'll definitely uh, see that as this video goes on. I did some upgrades to the truck, which again, you'll see uh, a little later on, but I do appreciate the people that actually reached out to me and uh, were a little concerned. And that's, that's my bad. I should have uh, maybe just even put a short video out saying, hey guys, I'm just gonna take a little bit of a holiday here myself and uh, you know, take care of some stuff. Uh, it's like everything else, I got back here, so I had to do the doctor's appointments and all that. So, and uh, all the tests uh, that I went and got done, everything's good, so. We're all good to go again, and uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this video, and uh, I'm back. But uh, what am I doing in Jared's truck? And what's what am I pulling? Well, I've been uh, debating on uh, pulling the trigger, and I have pulled the trigger. So I'm on my way right now to pick something up. That's uh, the new toy. And I ordered a trailer, and the trailer should be ready here next week. A 16 foot aluminum trailer, um, fully enclosed. So then this will be in there, and then that'll give me some more space inside to get some weight out, off the truck and out of the camper. So I'm gonna head up to a buddy's house there um, and uh, go for a little visit. I, I, I've only put about four kilometers on this thing, and I've had it for almost three weeks. So. I think it's about time I put some uh, some kilometers on it. Okay guys, we're continuation of uh, doing some work on the truck. We're heading out right now to put on the new tires. So I'm getting the Falcon Wild Peak AT4s put on. Um, and then I'll uh, talk maybe some more about my uh, upgrades I did on the suspension. Basically I added two leaf springs on uh, the truck, two per side. Um, I did that uh, about maybe a week and a half ago. But anyways, let's go get some uh, new tires put on the truck. Got the tires put on. I'll also mark that in my book. Uh, these Falcon Wild Peak AT4s were put on at 56,458 kilometers. So, so far I haven't noticed anything like I was thinking it was going to be because they're more of an aggressive tread, louder tire, but sounds the exact same, so, which is good. Didn't take them long, took them about an hour and 15 minutes to uh, put all six on balance and then uh, reprogram the sensors for the tires. Because I, I put the uh, aluminums that are on the back, back on the front. They were originally there and when I rotated my tires I put those rims on the back but uh, I didn't like the way the valve stems were sticking so I just told them to put those ones back on the front. Alright guys, I got the uh, truck in the shop here. Uh, I've got to make the uh, chains here for the uh, trailer here. but. So I took it to a reputable shop, but let me show you something here. And they do everything there. They do like, uh, they work on engines and brakes and stuff like that. So I'm just assuming that whoever does tires are the, the new guys, right? But it's a dually, which you all know, but look where that valve stem is in there. And if I go straight across from it, 
if I'm putting my gauge on there or the uh, inflator, I can't even see the valve. But guess what? That's not even the worst one. <laughs> Don't hit my head on the pipe. Look at this one. You can't even see the other side. <laughs> It's so far off, I don't even know where the valve is on this side. Uh, where is it? I, I gotta take both tires off and line them up. But yeah, look, look, look at that. Like, you can't even see the other valve. And this is from a tire shop. So I phoned them and I said, hey, you know, I mentioned to, to Dan, I said, listen, I said, this is what's going on. I actually took a picture. He goes, oh no, he says, come back. Well. It's about a 20 minute drive to the shop. I said, Dan, don't worry about it. I'll take them off myself and rotate them. I said, just mention it to the guys or tell the guys about it. So anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take the tires off um, and uh, put them back the way they are, or should be, which I'll show you when I'm done. But yeah, wild peak. So I wrote down the mileage and we'll see how these guys uh, fare out here. Um, I'm just heading to the trailer place right now. It's uh, um, Canadian Trailers. It's here in Godridge. They build an absolute beautiful trailer, which you will see. All aluminum done properly. All plywood, even on the inside. It's a beautiful built trailer. Um, and so, oh, a little bit of a spinny spinny on the duels. So anyways, I'm just heading in there right now. And... Uh, to just go over some measurements with the guy. Um, I've already ordered it. They said it'll be about three weeks to build, so they might have even started it right now. I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do guys is I, uh, I already went around and with a paintbrush and I went around the trim and everything. But I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna put, um, start rolling the floor. And then this is um, sandblasting glass. So it's crushed glass that they use for sandblasting. I'm gonna try to sprinkle it on the paint um, just to give it some more uh, grip while I'm walking if it's wet out. And then tomorrow I'll put another coat on top of this and even possibly a third coat, but we'll see. So it's just uh, glass and no, it's not gonna hurt your feet or anything like that. It's just uh, crushed glass. Um, instead of using sandblasting sand, uh, it's glass. So I don't know how this is gonna work, but we'll try.
So by now you have obviously uh, seen the, uh, the new trailer. There it is on the truck. And you know I have a side-by-side. -side. So let's just take a, take a walk around. You know I've already uh, painted the inside of the trailer. So that's how she sits in there, guys. There's not a whole lot of room. I, uh, I mean, if I can go turn the clocks back, um, I couldn't get it any wider. This is legally the biggest, the widest trailer. So I got an inch and a half on that side. And an inch and a half on this side. You'll see right up here, I got uh, two 20 liter uh, jerry cans for fuel. And then I got some jack stands there. The spare tire for the trailer is right there. And that right there is the windshield for the Can-Am. I uh, did a lot of upgrades on this trailer. I made sure I got the uh, heavy ramp. So it's a 2,500 pound ramp. I've got these transition plate here, which is really, really nice. Um, that way rocks and stuff don't go in your hinge and then you close the door on your uh, trailer and you, you do a lot of damage that way. So I also put a awning on the outside of the trailer. So that's a 14 foot awning. Of course, I, I upgraded the uh, um, axles from a 3,500 to 5,200 pound axles. And I also got the aluminum rims. And then the same place that actually built the trailer, they built the shelf for me here. And so these totes that were in the back of the truck, you can see now they're here. And the e-bike that was on the front of the truck is now here. So that, I just took off 500 pounds out of that, uh, out of that truck. So that, I'm happy about that. I'm really happy about that. And then uh, I have some, uh, I got a Blackstone grill. And then my barbecue will sit here beside it, which is the one I use all the time. There she is out there, little Weber. So up top there, I got a, uh, um, a ninja. And you know, if, everybody knows what those are. They're a slow cook or uh, air fryer, uh, cooler. That's the helmet there for the Can-Am. The other side over here, um, I mounted a, uh, a plastic pipe and inside it is my ax now. And you know my cooking tripod that my uh, buddy uh, Mark made from uh, Fire Pit Forge. So that got that, uh, that used to be in the basement of the camper. And uh, I mean, this is half inch uh, rolled steel. So this alone is, is probably 30 pounds. So that, that's extra weight that's off the uh, truck. And of course the grills of that black plastic bag right there that you've seen me use before. So what else also on this trailer, like for the upgrades I did is I got the transparent roof, uh, which works out really well. Like, Right now, uh, I know the back door is open, but it would it would still be this bright even with that door closed. And I just got them to install a, a, a roof vent. I also made sure that those wires ran up there and they go to a switch here. So this one's for the lights inside the camper, but you can see the LED lights there. And the second one here, uh, in case I want to put a powered vent up there someday, uh, the wires already ran. So uh, made sure they did that, but yeah. And uh, so I got a lot of E-channel. That's uh, really nice stuff. It's really handy. That's so I got the, uh, the bike all attached there like that. Hindsight's always great. When I ordered the trailer, um, I didn't actually have this side-by-side -side at the time. And at the same time, they never had one because around here, it's a, it's a farming community. So nobody wants one of these. They all want the ones with the dump box and uh, I think Outlander, I think maybe that's what they're called. Um, so they, they never, this dealership never even had one of these in their shop before. Um, so I really didn't know how it was going to fit. So this is a 16 foot trailer. So the, how they measure it is from the back there all the way up to the V. So they, they don't count the V itself, but from this edge here, to the back of the trailer is 16 feet and that's how they measure it. And looking now, I mean, it works. There, there's no doubt it works, but maybe I should have got an 18 footer maybe. I don't know. Um, not that you're gonna spend much time in here anyways and obviously it fits. And weight wise, um, this is 2000 pounds. I think they said it was 1900. 
I'm going to say I have approximately six, 700 pounds total in, up in the front here. So I'm, I'm around 3,000 pounds, and the trailer is 2,400 pounds. So it's just over 5,000 pounds um, on, on this trailer. And it's a 10,800 pound trailer. That's the, uh, the the gross vehicle weight rating on this trailer. So I'm just, just over half of what this thing can actually physically carry. So I'm well within the limits of the trailer. I also, since I'm here, I'm able to show you the hitch. I got that. I put uh, chains on there and everything. So the hitch is all done. Um, and I also put a weight distribution hitch. So this is an Anderson hitch. Um, and maybe sometimes if... Uh, Somebody wants to know more about it, I can always do a more in-depth uh, talk about it. It makes a huge, huge difference. Oh, and also uh, the company that built the trailer, I got them to build this platform for me. So uh, I had to cut my stairs off because obviously I couldn't lower them because of the trailer. So I had to cut them off. And I don't know if I, you actually saw it in there, but they're sitting right there. So I can actually bolt them back on if i decide to, i'm not gonna have the trailer on for like a while i can just bolt them back on and then i got my stairs back but i got them to make this plate here so then i just step from the ground onto the plate onto here and i'm in the trailer so that worked out, that works out really well but yeah um as far as everything else goes uh, the truck has no issue pulling it so as time goes on, I'll definitely uh, do some changes and, you know, moves. I just kind of put this all together in one day. So um, we'll see how much I uh, like it or, or shift things around a little bit. But she fits. It's quite the looking beast, isn't it? <laughs> Should make some good videos there. I'll end up probably putting a GoPro maybe up on top of the roof there and to do some recording. The reason I have those jack stands there and also this board here that there's this foam this board that the, the foam's attached to. When I take the truck off the camper and I lower it down to fairly low to the ground, I can actually put two jack stands in that board across the front and just put a little bit of weight on there, like three, 400 pounds. And, and that just gives it a lot of stability. It just takes, uh, like don't lift the jacks up off there, but just use that to actually, it's as if it's a sawhorse. And nothing on the back because the back's really close to the ground and, and those jacks, like I mean, this thing's only going to be off the ground about a foot, so this thing doesn't move. But on the front there, when I lower the front, it's kind of nice to support it a little bit. So that's what that's there for. So other than that, guys, oh, and there's something else you might want to know is uh, <laughs> I am now 49 feet. Um, so we, I guess we could round it off to 50 feet, except when I go on a ferry, it's 49 because <laughs> you, pay, you pay per foot. So yeah, that thing now is uh, 49 feet long, which is gonna change the way I do things a little bit, obviously. But on the other hand, that's the whole reason too for getting the side-by-side, -side, right? I don't have to take this poor girl up the uh, logging roads to do a little exploring. I can find a nice spot down below and then uh, head up there with the uh, with the side-by-side. -side. I'm going to, before we leave though, I am going to go down to the uh, grain elevator and uh, put this on the scale. So I, I, I don't know if it was the last trip or the trip before when I was back. I did that just strictly with the camper. It had um, two propane tanks full. It had the water full. And I was sitting around 13,800 pounds. Um, so I'm gonna do front axle, rear axle, then the whole thing and I'll know exactly. I'm, and I'm going to take the trailer off and then go back on with the truck and that way I'll know how much tongue weight I've actually ha have on the truck right now. Um, <clears throat> one thing I did notice, so when I hooked the, the trailer on um, and, and put the weight on the tongue, it, went, it squatted uh, three eighths of an inch. Then I put the distribution hitch on and the back end went up one eighth of an inch. So you can tell that's what the weight distribution hitch is. It, it forces the front end down on your truck and, and uh, it puts more weight back on the front tires. So yeah, I, it went down three eighths of an inch and then I gained an eighth of an inch. So that's it. That's the update as we go right now, guys. Um, I am almost ready to hit the road and we're gonna be heading out to the East Coast uh, in Canada. So uh, there's a couple more things I'm waiting for, and I'll show you them once I get, uh, get them in. 
Um, but other than that, we are, um, we're pretty well ready to get going on the road here. But I, again, I want to just mention again, I do appreciate the uh, people that reached out to me and were concerned and it was my fault. I shouldn't have just dropped the ball like that. Um, but at the same time, I needed a holiday and I uh, had a nice time back here in Ontario and visited with friends and maybe, maybe had one or two too many parties. So <laughs> I'm hoping to have some, lots of good times in the, uh, in the United States with that thing down in the BLM land. and in uh, Texas and Arizona, New Mexico, and even California. So that thing should be lots of fun. And I will do another video on this because there's something I have to tell you about this machine that I just went through with. Um, and it's not, it, it wasn't a good thing, let's put it that way. So um, my, my confidence in this machine is not 100%, um, and, but I'll do another video on that strictly on the Can-Am.
Stormy's in the uh, shop here, ready to see me off. And no, I did not buy a bike. This is the rental. Three of us are going to go around the lake here and maybe like Superior, we don't know. Anyways, time to hit the road. What we ended up doing, guys, is uh, actually something that's called the Lake Huron uh, Circle Tour. And so we uh, crossed at Sarnia and Port, Port Huron. And then our first night, we stopped at Alpina. Um, but yeah, no, it was a beautiful drive other than the last day, um, which was really warm. Uh, we did uh, 1,700 kilometers in uh, four days, but uh, we just had perfect weather. Nobody had issues. Uh, there's Wheats and I standing there. Wheats also was the mechanic at the salt mine, and you guys already know Jared. Uh, but yeah, we and then on the way back, we actually stopped at a friend's place that has a cottage. There's Wheats, and he had a beautiful bike. Uh, we stayed, you stayed at a cottage just out of Sudbury, and I thought it was a really nice break to go on a boat ride. Get off the bikes for a little bit, even if it was just for a short time. But anyways, guys, uh, it was uh, awesome, and I'm glad we had the opportunity to uh, actually hang out and go for a bike ride. And then also at the same time, um, I, I visit friends. Like uh, This is Scoob's house here, right here. There's Scooby there at the bottom corner. I camped at his place more than once. And then I also went to a campground just uh, south of, or sorry, north of Kincardin. Hopefully the uh, wind doesn't hurt the uh, mic here too much. You can tell it's really windy here today. And that in the background is the Bruce Nuclear Power Plant. So I'm north of Kincardine, about uh, 20 kilometers north of Kincardine. And Lake Huron does not look like she wants to play nice today. Well, it's not letting me do my front axle. I was hoping to do, like right now, my duals are still on the concrete. It just says drive forward, so. And it still says drive forward. Darn it. And now the whole truck is on. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna have to get up and take a picture, so. It does not let me do, that's too bad. 8,000, I gotta go up and take a close picture, guys, because I don't think, well, maybe if I get close, a little bit closer here. When I uh, go to a cat scale, I'll be able to do it at a cat scale. 8,840 kilos. Let me walk up there.
So it wouldn't even show up on my uh, cell phone, but it's 8,850 eagles between 50 and 45. 8,850 kg. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I uh, appreciate you coming along and uh, thanks for uh, waiting for me to uh, get back at this. It's a beautiful sunny day today. 20, it's going to be uh, 23 degrees Celsius, so that's just over 72, 73. And uh, yeah, I think it's about time uh, JJ uh, gets out there. So, again, guys, thanks a lot for following and uh, welcome back, I guess. So, be good, be kind, be careful. We'll see you down the road. Bye bye.